In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about specifics of academic music librarian positions, including some of the major types. We won't cover nearly all of the types of jobs that occur in academic libraries for music specialists, um, but we'll touch on a few of them. First of all, qualifications for academic music librarians uh, tend to include a library degree, a master's level library degree, in almost all cases, um, as well as extensive knowledge of music. Often a, only a bachelor's is required, but sometimes an advanced degree like a master's or a PhD is required. Uh, and often uh, those higher degrees are preferred even if they're not listed as required in a job description. Most academic music librarians are also expected to pursue some sort of professional development or research such as participating in national uh, committees and organizations within the Music Library Association, publishing in journals, publishing book reviews, uh, and att attending conferences. Academic music librarians tend to specialize based on the kind of procedures and responsibilities that they have. Um, this can involve any of the, the types of jobs listed here um, and others. So many music librarians will focus on cataloging and metadata or acquisitions and collection development. Uh, so the sort of technical services side of things, or they might specialize in reference and research services or instruction and outreach or access services on the public services side. Um, and sometimes music librarians will specialize in preservation, of, especially of music materials and physical processing, such as uh, binding or digitization. One of the most common job types you'll see as you're exploring job postings this week is uh, liaison librarians. So liaison librarians are librarians assigned to one or more academic areas where they're the link between the library and the academic department. For some music librarians, that's just the music department. Very frequently, music librarians are also the liaison to dance and theater departments, um, and sometimes to other arts and performing uh, arts and humanities fields, or even beyond that, depending on the size of the library and the number of liaison librarians. Assignment to these areas is usually based on academic background, but the degree of academic background can vary a lot. And since liaisons are often assigned to multiple multiple departments, you may not have as much expertise in other fields. So for example, if you're a music and theater librarian, you're likely to only have an advanced degree in one of those. Um, or you may even be assigned to biology or business or a completely unrelated department, depending on the needs, um, especially if there are leaves or job vacancies. Liaison librarians are primarily responsible for conveying information and updates to faculty and students. They provide answers to subject specific questions about resources and help to make decisions about resources by advising collections and resource librarians about the needs that they see in the faculty and students they work with. It's important that liaison librarians keep up to date on new developments in their areas. So keeping up to date on what the current problems and issues in your specific subject area are um, both within library science and within the research areas of your faculty and students. A lot of liaison librarians are responsible for providing instruction, reference, and research or consultation services. Um, even if that's not their area of expertise, they might be expected to provide that kind of uh, interaction with people in their particular subject area. Um, and they may have other main areas of responsibilities. So often collections and resources librarians, acquisition librarians, access services librarians may be assigned an area of responsibility that they're the liaison to, uh, even if public services is not their main area. I wanna look at two different position postings for music librarian positions with liaison responsibilities. The Research Librarian for Music and Performing Arts at UVA serves as liaison to the Department of Music, Drama, and the Dance Minor, and provides, provides support for the faculty and students for, of performing arts. As we look through the 
posting, you'll see that uh, this librarian position um, requires a master's degree in library or information science or an advanced degree in music and appropriate experience in an academic library. So the music background is equally important to the library background. Um, the qualifications that are preferred also include experience, but um, familiarity with scholarly communication, metadata, and working knowledge of foreign languages, especially German and French, which are um, important languages within music studies. This liaison position at Binghamton University requires working as liaison both to music and to a set of other disciplines, art, art history, and romance languages. So a pretty wide variety of fields that require really different kinds of skills. Looking at the description, you'll see that they expect this position to serve as liaison to all these fields, um, providing research consultations, reference services, um, working with library resource centers and museums and special collections, and pursuing scholarly growth, so participating in professional organizations and research. Looking at the requirements, we'll also see that this position requires a degree in library science or the equivalent um, at a bachelor's degree in any of the fields in which the, um, the librarian serves as liaison. Uh, and proficiency in French, Italian, or Spanish. Here it's listed as a required qualification rather than just as preferred. Um, but the preferred qualifications include a master's degree in one of these fields, as well as some other kinds of experience uh, that might be important to the position. So you see that these are two different positions that both sort of frame their job duties as liaison responsibilities, but are fairly different in the scope of those responsibilities in terms of the disciplines and norms that you have to be familiar with to be able to cover those disciplines. Another kind of music specialist you'll often find in academic libraries is a music cataloger or music metadata librarian. So they usually perform both specialized copy cataloging of music materials um, and more importantly, original cataloging of music materials in a variety of different formats. So they have to develop expertise in the original cataloging of music formats, um, which is a skill that not all catalogers have. Some places even outsource their music cataloging because of the specialized nature of that job. Music catalogers have to keep up to date on and even contribute to the controlled vocabulary and authorities related to music. So we'll talk about this in more detail later in the semester. Uh, but controlled vocabulary like name authorities and uh, thesaurus terms uh, for music are have a especially sort of fraught issues. Um, so often music catalogers uh, help make policy about those vocabulary and authority terms. They also have to be able to read basic music materials um, in major languages that are collected by the library that they're working in since often things like scores may not have uh, any English language labeling, uh, but are still usable by English speaking users. They also are expected to keep up to date on the different metadata schemes that are available for dealing with music and that might be used by uh, different other institutions or vendors um, and with discovery systems like Primo and how they interact with the metadata that's being created. It's really important for music catalogers to have a good knowledge of music recording and score formats and the kinds of abbreviations that are used in those because that's one of the areas that, they, that there are often, there's often need for really specialized skills. Academic music librarians also are often branch librarians, meaning that they have to do a little bit of everything. About 55% of academic librarian positions for music specialists fall into the branch librarian category. Uh, so we're going to talk about those in more detail next week. These three categories of branch, liaison, and cataloging librarian are, are certainly not the only kinds of roles you'll find, um, but I think that the majority of the postings you're going to find are going to fall into one of those categories.
One of the more controversial questions in academic librarianship is the question of faculty status. Most universities classify their employees primarily as either faculty or staff. And there's controversy over whether librarians should be considered faculty, like most professors and researchers, or as staff, like lab staff and student affairs or student success staff, for example. Those who favor faculty status usually associate it with a certain level of prestige and hope that faculty status will help librarians gain the respect of teaching faculty who may be more likely to treat them as colleagues if they have the same rank. Faculty status can also sometimes come with the possibility of tenure and the associated security. Tenure is essentially uh, a lifetime appointment to your job with, all, with the ability to be revoked or canceled only in case of cause or severe financial exigency. So tenured faculty are protected in a way that staff are not. Others also see faculty status as a recognition of the teaching role of librarians, especially instructional librarians, and as acknowledging the need for academic freedom for librarians, meaning that they can't be fired for expressing their opinions um, even if they're unpopular. Faculty positions can also come with the ability to serve on governing bodies for the university and help to set policy and make decisions on a university scale, as well as research support. So funding and leave to perform research. Often it is also used as a tool to gain salary parity with faculty. That is, if librarian positions are titled similarly to faculty positions, then it's easier to insist that librarians should be paid in a similar way to faculty. Faculty positions also usually come with publishing expectations, meaning that librarians who have faculty status are typically expected to publish in academic journals and books. This can be seen as a positive, or sometimes as a negative aspect of faculty status. A lot of these are clearly very important concerns. However, there are some arguments in favor of staff status. Some would argue that staff status more closely reflects the duties of many librarians who may not have any kind of instructional role and who see their responsibilities as primarily support. Others are also happy to do away with the publish or perish pressure that's seen in academic faculty positions. That is, the idea that you must publish a certain amount early in your career in order to obtain tenure or you'll be denied. And this is a really high stakes process in that denial of tenure can be really difficult to overcome. It can be really difficult to find a new position after you've been denied tenure at your original job. The tenure process can also make people feel relatively locked into their position. It can be difficult to feel the ability to move if that may restart your tenure clock, that is restart the time period you have until coming up for tenure and promotion. So some feel that the tenure process and faculty status limits their mobility and their career options. And because tenure often depends on publishing in particular venues, such as high level journals or monographs, some also feel like not having that tenure process to go through gives them the freedom to pursue a greater variety of activity. For example, publishing in open access resources, participating in poster sessions and committees, instead of focusing on their own publishing at, at the expense of everything else. And having different promotion processes and review processes allows different types of achievements to be valued. It's important to realize that this is more a continuum than a binary. That is, not all universities have a structure that puts librarians clearly in either of these roles. Um, in some places, they are fa have faculty status, but not the availability of tenure. So they may have some of the prestige and 
salary parity without the tenure and maybe without the research support or the degree of academic freedom that faculty expect. Um, or you might have an arrangement like at UWM where librarians are non-teaching academic staff because UWM actually has four categories, faculty, teaching academic staff, which includes adjuncts and lecturers, non-teaching academic staff that includes student support and librarians, and staff, university staff that includes things like facilities and maintenance workers. So here there's uh, a number of categories that fall in between the traditional ideas of faculty and staff. Each institution is going to be different in terms of exactly where the librarians fall on this continuum and what these terms mean, but I think it's helpful to know what the sort of categories uh, at the extremes are so that you can understand where the positions you're looking at might fall. One of the things we're reading about this week is the difference between faculty and staff status librarian positions. So I wanted to show you this position, which is for an assistant professor of music who serves as a music librarian. So in this case, this is a, uh, a tenure, job, tenure track job with a 10 month calendar, which is similar to how teaching faculty positions are usually set up. And you'll notice that this job includes both functioning as the uh, librarian, evaluating student employees, selecting materials for the collections, but also in some terms teaching music history um, with a reduced load for res librarian responsibilities um, and advising and mentoring music majors. Uh, and they also are expected to maintain creative and scholarly activity. So this is actually a, a sort of a job where the position requires you to serve sort of as both music professor, music history professor, and music librarian. Um, again, a master's degree in library science is required, but in this case, a master's degree in music, preferably musicology is required, um, experience in teaching, as well as um, sort of more library focused experience in archives, for example. I also want to talk a little bit about performance librarians who may work within an academic setting, like at a conservatory um, or educational music festival like Tinglewood, or they may work for a freestanding ensemble like a major orchestra or band. The qualifications of ensemble librarians are a little different from those of academic librarians in that the emphasis is usually on the music background with a library degree often as a desirable or preferred qualification, but not a required one. That's because ensemble librarians deal with a much smaller range of materials and users, but a larger degree of specialized musical tasks, such as music copying, um, understanding and acquiring copyright permissions, licenses, uh, and even participating in music publishing. They usually have to have a high degree of attention to detail because a big part of their job is making sure that the ensemble has exactly what they need in terms of parts, that they have all the permissions that they need, um, and so these can have practical and legal implications if they're done wrong. Here's a quick look at an ensemble librarian job posting. This is within an academic institution, the Peabody Institute in Baltimore. And you'll see that in this case, the ensemble librarian reports to the ensemble office and is responsible for managing performance, copyright, and library functions to support several ensembles within the Institute. They deal with a large non-circulating collection, so there's no um, need to deal with circulation or access, but they're responsible for music rentals and purchases, managing the rental budget, both for music and for instruments, and preparing and distributing performance parts for all the major ensembles. So these jo job duties are very focused on actual performance and preparing the institution and the ensembles for their performances. If you look at the qualifications here, you see that the bachelor in music is required and an advanced degree or in music or library science is preferred. Uh, 
experience is required, though advanced degrees may substitute for that. Um, and there's an emphasis on things like music publishing, licensing, copyright, technical skills, organizational details, and the ability to work with faculty and musicians. Most music librarians work either in an academic setting or an ensemble setting. We'll talk briefly next week about some special libraries, like museums and archives, as well as a particular subset of academic librarians, those who manage their own separate branches of the library system.